deep from the heartland of Guangzhou, China. In the foundries which have forged the nation comes a cheap as tin opener which doesn't work because they were too mean to put grease on it. Welcome to Cheap Pass Engineering 101 and today to fix a non-functioning tin opener we will need a hammer, a blowtorch, some LM2 grease or uh, molly based or lithium based grease, a pair of pliers, some lubricant, I'm using WD-40 and 800 grit sandpaper. You also need about half an hour of your life probably some of that's to watch this video the other half is actually flipping fix this thing is it really worth it no but welcome to cheap pass engineering right so i've got a tin opener which is quite nicely jammed i've taken good care of it and unfortunately it looks like this bit has utterly totally seized oh crap i've just cut my finger so this bit's rotating nicely, this bit is seized, and you may just think, right, okay, so maybe I'll just undo this screw here. And what happens when we undo that screw? So the screw comes off, and lo and behold, we, it still doesn't come off. So, get a pair of pliers and see if we can move it. Oh, starting to shift a bit, but not by much. This should be freely rotating. Or well, something should be freaking freely rotating. Let's see if we can get this off. Let's get a hammer to it. That is utterly and totally seized. So that's man, that's not coming off at all, is it? I have washed this and kept this in pretty good condition. It's not coming off at all. Right. Okay. What I'm going to try and do is put some something to see if I can unseize it from there, which isn't particularly nice because it's in, so I need to use this to cut open tins. Right. One can of WD-40 later. Let's see if we can get it off. Stick it right down there. Okay. Oh, cry out loud. That is well and truly seized. Right, let's see if we can. Yeah. So it's starting, this is now starting to turn. But this should be turning freely up here. And considering this has been taken care of, it shouldn't really rust. Right, so let's give it a few. I don't want to really damage that cutting disc either. Alright, let's Damn it. Right, Let's see if I can grab this, rotate it. If I can't, I'm going to use my, oh, cry out loud, I'm going to use my super secret weapon. Don't 
that is flipping stuck seized really flipping oh, blimey seized let's start rounding these teeth off soon right let's see if I can get this bit off because the next steps we need to apply heat oh is that coming off yay sort of the most annoying part is this is actually the most expensive tin opener I've got it's been used really well and taken care of. It's cheap flipping steel. Oh, flip's sake. Right. If I, I'm going to apply a torch against that and see if I can free it up because it's ridiculously tight should be free rotating should literally rotate against the actual flipping tin should cut into the tin and rotate that one is that one is quite nicely rotating move it around so that's quite nicely rotating that's going to get purchased that's going to be quite good on the tin this however isn't and looks like it's kind of copper underneath it's light shade metal for some reason but I can't believe that seized up that's been taken care of that's been washed and cleaned every single time I've used it and air dried so it just shows the poor quality of steel that leads it to do this Let's see if I can grab one of these teeth <sighs> flipping eh? That's not going to go anywhere, is it? Right, I need to get that off. Cry out loud. For some reason, that's still stuck into there. Right. Okay, let's see how I can prize this. Oh, it's wobbling, but it's not coming off. torch it with that on yeah, I could probably can do that I'll just apply heat on this portion here probably got a likelihood of melting that but if I do that get the pliers turn it got a good chance of um, actually doing something moving it all right let's get a torch Heating this up. For crying out loud. Get, my, get my torch working again. Got my torch working again. I'm just going to heat this up a bit. And what I'm going to do is squirt a little drop of this on there to cool it down. And also put some lubricant in there. You can see the rust flipping coming out of there. Oh, yeah. It's starting to move far easier now. Look at that rust coming out. Let's see if we can get this off. It's like it's pressed on.
Yay. Ridiculous thing. See that rust flipping dripping off it. Still got tough spots on there. Let's see if we can heat it up a bit more. All right, I'm gonna move this to a different location so I don't blow myself up. come off quite nicely oh, come on the last bit there you go right and I'm not going to touch that because it's going to be flipping off but you can see that's what it looks like see that's corroded to crap and we're going to sand that down put some grease in that sand that stick it all back together and hope you've got a fully functional tin opener which will last a long time you quite see interesting screws in there as well all right Okay, so everything's cooled down. Got this off. It's about five minutes later. If I just move the camera a bit, you can see that that is corroded. That is what's preventing this from flipping spinning around. Have they put about a penny's worth of grease on there in the first place we would not be in this problem we'd actually last forever because that's actually not bad steel but this must be cheapest quality rubbish that they ever got then that's not bad that's not too bad i thought it was going to be worse it's uh, it's kind of pitted because it's you can see there oh oh there you go it's pitted around there you can actually feel it so it's starting to go bad, but literally if you bought one of these and you fixed it yourself in the first place, you'd never end up with this problem. Ridiculous, isn't it? Right, let's get that. Let's start scrubbing all the rubbish out of there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. Oh, that's gone slightly oval for uh, not good reasons. Never mind, it doesn't matter as long as I've got the screw at the top to keep it in. It's all right. I'm actually going to clean this blade off a bit as well. Again, camera. So it's seen better days, but principles of fixing something, isn't it? Right. Let's get some uh, sandpaper. I've got a whole bunch of it. I'm gonna find a, a very fine grit there. And I've got some ridiculously fine grit here because I've got some automotive grade paper goes all the way down to 3000 grit which is pretty much like paper paper <laughs> yeah, you literally can use that wet and dry in the car I'm going to find something reasonably abrasive uh, that's good uh, 800 grit let's get some of that cut it off right it's going to cut off a small bit because I don't need a lot
sand around here. Just take all the rust and the rubbish off and hopefully some of the rough edges because I have been hammering it a bit. Oh, that's coming up quite nicely. That is coming up really nicely. So if you want to do this yourself, it's 800 grit. Working out really nice there. There's some scoring at the top there still, but it's, it's actually smoothing it quite nicely out. That's really smooth. I can feel that. That's quite smooth. And ideally, once I put the grease in this, it's going to last forever. Well, it lasts a really, really, really long time. It means I can also wash it under the tap because that grease isn't going to go anywhere soon. They obviously put zero, flipping zero grease in the first place to get to this situation. I'm going to try and run some sandpaper through there. So just get this, bend it round, put it into kind of a, a U shape, and wedge it through. Oh. Showing everybody how to do that and didn't. Ah, there you go. Right. Yeah, that feels better and better. That's not too bad, and you can start to see the inside of that's cleaning up quite nicely as well. Still some pit marks. Okay. The second reason this fails is because they use the cheapest grade of steel they feasibly can. Instead of using stainless steel, which would last forever, they use some rubbish junk grade of steel. See that's cleaning up. I'm going to clean that side as well, why not? Let's blow through that, clean it up a bit. And look, I've got more there. I'm going to clean it up properly if I'm going to do it. Right, I should really get a screwdriver. If I had a screwdriver available, I'm not going to bother going and find one now. If I had a screwdriver available, I would literally wedge it in. Ah, oh, actually, see if this goes. Ah, uh, uh, not really. Right, I would get a screwdriver and wedge it through there and use it to rub the inside of that out. I'm going to get a pair of gloves actually to put because they're fancy. Messing up my hands too much it allows me to be a bit more rough as well. That's better. It means I don't cut myself when I'm sanding this all down. That is working out really nicely so just blow through there clean out the uh, excess rubbish let's see what it's like oh look at that that's what we want to get i'm going to do a little bit extra that's nice i don't need to do that i'm going to do a little bit extra on this because it's really helped it a lot i'm going to use the other side of the sandpaper because i've pretty much exhausted the other side and let's do it again so can you fix a five pound uh, tin opener the answer is yes should you need to fix five pound tin opener the answer should be no because they should have just stick an extra pennies worth of grease in there in the first place and it'll last for flipping ever this particular five pan tin opener is from Sainsbury's, which annoyed me. And I actually have cheaper ones, which are just as bad. I actually bought this because that stopped working and it annoyed me so much that both of them stopped working because this has got a different fault on it. This one bends in. It starts to bend in. It has zero value in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an angle grinder to that and fix it. But I shouldn't need to fix it in the first place. And now, thankfully, as I fix this one, I don't really need to fix the other one. That is becoming really smooth. So as you're sanding this down, this is going to get smoother and smoother and smoother. And you can see there, 
I don't know if you can hear the difference, but when I started, that was, took a bit more effort to push through. And I appreciate the sandpaper's grinding down, which is gonna make that a bit easier still. Blowing through there, because I don't really want any dipping carborundum or whatever that is grinding this and making my life harder again right so we're almost there we almost fixed it what i'm going to do before i finish and i can put that over away is use some of this lm2 multi-purpose grease or lithium based grease uh this one is particularly car lube this stuff should not be without if you want to fix anything it's absolutely brilliant you want to fix kitchen appliances brilliant because and don't use it with food for crying out loud. Um, because this is high temperature grease. I think you can put this in bearings or something, don't you? So look, yeah, there you go. Um, don't know if you can read that. Uh, automotive applications, um, ideal for lubrication, where it's somewhere I should say somewhere. Uh, high resistance to oxidization and water uh, washout, which means this stuff is perfect for that. This is probably, I don't know, less than 10p, if that, you know, considering I buy this in a tube, this tube's last me for next to forever. And they couldn't be bothered to stick it on. So what's that tell you? Cheapest possible way of doing it. Flipping cheap. It's a level beyond cheap. What I'm gonna do is I also stick this now on this side here. And then put it into the hole because when I push that through, it's going to lubricate the entire shaft. So let's stick this through. Ah, oh, perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do that and quite cheeky. Stick that through, take that top, stick that around there. And don't worry, I'm going to clean up the excess lube off the uh, cutting disc. Perfect. Right. Now, in theory, I should really kind of scrub the... Oh, I'm going to do it. I wasn't going to bother cleaning this flipping screw, but I'm going to scrub the back of it, because why not? If you want to do a job, do it properly. Because no one else flipping does. It takes seconds, seconds to flipping fix stuff. In fact, it's probably taken... I appreciate it's taken me about 20, 30 minutes to go through this. But it's taken me probably less time to go to a supermarket, go there, go through the checkout, fix it. Just blow the end off that, blow all the new thing off that. I'm going to stick that in there and look at that. See, that actually has packed that hole with grease. And I appreciate you've got to be sometimes careful with grease and holes because of hydraulic pressures. But I don't think I'm going to really worry about that in a tin opener. Yay! Oh, no, tightened it too much. So actually that tightens it. There you go. Needed a bit of counterclockwise twisting and now it's working. see how it does mm. oh, don't tell me it's failed in this bit now still doesn't like it that's because it's and it's wallowed out think that bit that I saw earlier where it didn't look square is wallowed out. 
it's not perfectly pivotal. Oh dear. Well, might end up chalking this one down to failure, but at least I know how the flipping thing works. I don't know if I want to buy another one. Take that off. Get some of this in there. And ideally fix. But that was... That took... A flipping blowtorch to take off. Because it was so corroding. Look at all that. Because somebody didn't bother sticking in a couple of pennies worth of grease. Unfortunately, I think this one's destined for the bin. No. No. Oh, well. Let's see I think I might be able to use this. Right, I'm going to test this. I'm going to test it. Right, I'm going to test this on a tin. Let's see if this fucking works. Hey, it does actually work. Although it has a spot where it doesn't like it. That's probably because the tin's bent. Flipping mage. Not really much luck to do, am I? Oh. There you go. After thinking it wasn't going to work, it actually does work. Uh, was it worth the effort? <laughs> That's the principles of cheap ass engineering. No, it was not worth the effort. But it works. I know why it flipping failed. I know what to do to fix when it fails. Hopefully there's one person in the entire flipping world who will fix it when it fails. Fair enough, you may need a small blowtorch, <laughs> a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and about 30 minutes of your life, and some sandpaper, 800 grit. But it can be fixed. But the point is, you don't need to fix it if you've got one to start with. Flip and put some grease on it, and you won't fix it. Utterly pointless YouTube video, but there you go.